Assalamu alaikum dear researchers and welcome to the lecture number 3 of PLS SEM with Smart PLS 4. In this lecture we are going to discuss the PLS algorithm, how to assess validity and reliability of a reflective measurement model. So we drew this model in the previous lecture and we are going to evaluate this model right now in this video. So the outer model, all the indicators are over here. These are basically the questions that are asked. These are reflective in nature because as we can see that the arrow is from the construct to the indicators, right? So first of all, we are going to test the reliabilities and validities of these indicators. That is what we do in the measurement model. So we go to the calculate PLS SEM algorithm. All the settings should be left as it is. If we change some settings, for example, I make it unstandardized results. I make it individual weights. We can define some weights over here. We can go back to default setting by just pressing this button. If you want to open the report, you can uh, check this box. Otherwise, we can just start calculation. And we will see some results that appear on the screen. So these are some numbers. Actually, in essence, these numbers over here are the factor loadings. Right? And I'm going to tell you in a while what is the standard that we expect in factor loading. These numbers on the constructs are, if we can see, these are the constructs, R square. I want to change this value to AVEs, that is the average, average variance extracted. Or if we want to change the reliability, I want to check the reliabilities, we can check them from over here. If we open the report, on the left hand side you will see these are some results. So these are the final results, the path coefficient, indirect. We are not interested in them right now because all these results we want to see uh, the p-value or the bootstrapping results of the confidence interval. So that we will see in the bootstrapping. Right now we are more interested in the quality criteria of the measurement model. So we are interested in construct reliability and validity and discriminant validity for the measurement model. So I'm going to click this button. And here with this, in the table we see the Cronbeck alpha. That is we also use to calculate when we do regression in SPSS. This Cronbeck alpha should be greater than 0 0.7. Then row C, the composite reliability that is again a measure of reliability that is more relevant to structure equation modeling. So uh, the recent text actually prefer composite reliability over Cronbeck alpha. But since Cronbeck alpha is more established, more traditional, so it is always appropriate to include both of these in your uh, research report. And then we have the AVE, the average variance extracted. So when we are checking the reflective model, what we need to see? First of all, we need to see the reliability or internal consistency. The benchmark values for Cronbeck Alpha should be greater than 0.7. Composite reliability should be greater than 0.7. And factor loadings should be preferably greater than 0.7, but greater than 0.4 are also acceptable. Now, these factor loadings are actually relevant to AVE values. So if we check the AVE values first, for instance, in our results, we see there is one red. Because in this software, you will see if the values are uh, within the range, they will be green and if they are not according to the criteria, they will be red. So as you can see, one of the values of AVE is red, which means in negative effect, all the factors are not contributing 50% variance in the original construct. So we should do to rectify this. What we can do is we can again look at the outer loadings. We can look at the outer loadings from two views. One is this outer loading final results view in either matrix form or if you want to see in the list form. Right, so matrix is more uh, user friendly, and we can see negative effect. Uh, there are three factors or indicators which are loading on more than 0.7, while two are actually less than 0.7. If outer loading is less than 0.4, we have to delete the reflective indicators in any case. If outer loading is between 0.4 and 0.7, as earlier discussed, we have to analyze the constructs in general consistency reliability and conversion validity that is AVE. If the construct measure do not meet the recommended threshold, we delete the reflective indicator so that the content validity increases or the AVE value increases. In case our AVE values are greater than 0.4 but less than 0.7 and we want to retain our uh, constructs, if the recommended thresholds are met, we can retain the reflective indicators. And if outer loadings are greater than 0.7, so obviously the AVEs are going to be greater than 0.7 because AVE value is actually directly related upon the outer loadings. So in our case, as we can see, 
since the AVE value of negative effect, I'm going to show the AVE value over here. Let me go to the edit mode and here I will go to show the AVE value. So this is 0.474. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the indicator with the lowest loading and going to rerun this. And we can see that now the AVE value is as per the benchmark that is greater than 0.5. So if I open the report and I go to construct reliability and validity overview, we can see, okay, in this case, what has happened that Cronbeck alpha has decreased. It's like 0 0.696. That's just the threshold. If, if we round it off, it will be 0 0.7, but the AV value is okay. And so once again, let's repeat internal consistency reliability. We, we made it by two uh, stats. That is Cronbeck alpha. Its estimation of reliability is based upon intercorrelation of all indicators of latent variables should be greater than 0 0.7. Then composite reliability it considered differential weights of indicators while we are calculating it. So it should be greater than 0.7 as well. Then we have conversion validity. It refers to the degree to which two or more indicators of the same constructs are positively correlated to each other. So here we are talking about the indicators level and these indicators loading should be uh, greater than uh, 0.7 or 0.4 and AVE should be greater than 0.5. So AVE is a summary of conversion validity calculated as a summation of squared values of outer loadings of a construct divided by total number of indicators. So a 0.5 means we have enough conversion validity of a construct. Then comes the important point of discriminant validity. Discriminant validity is the extent to which items of a factor are distinctive and uncorrelated from items of other factors. So we have three measures that is item cross loadings. Fornell Arker method and heterotate monotrait of correlation. So let's look at these three discriminant validity on the left hand side HTMT, Fornell Arker criteria, and cross loading. And once again, if we look at HTMT, we see a red uh, value, which means that there, this is this is something that we need to rectify because our measurement model in discriminant validity is not fulfilling the criteria. So, what should be value of HTMT? it should be less than 0 0.9 and in this case it is not less than 0 0.9 so how can we rectify it for this we need to look at obviously negative effect and psychological distress seem to be overlapping constructs so what we can do is we can look at first of all let's see if the FL method is also telling us the same results yes in FL method of foreign language criteria, these values on the diagonal are basically square root of AVEs and these values underneath are the correlation between the construct. So fear of terrorism under root AVE is 0 0.758. Its correlation with negative effect is 0.369. So in any case for discriminant validity, the topmost value should be greater than the lower values. So it is greater in all these cases, but here we can see that for negative effect and psychological distress, the correlation is too high, whereas the under root of AVE is less. So let's look at the cross loadings and see where the problem lies. If we look at the cross loading, we can see that for negative effect, the items of psychological distress are also loading heavily over here, although they are loading in greater strength on psychological distress but here they are also loading on the other hand we can see that items of negative effect are also have high loading on psychological distress since i have already deleted item from psychological uh, from uh, negative effect i think we can try by deleting some items from psychological distress okay so which item should i delete i think uh, amongst these this 0 0.654 is the highest so let's try by deleting it first this is psychological distress 6 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, delete this one rerun the PLS algorithm again open the report go to the quality criteria discriminant validity and still our problem is not solved. So let's look at cross loadings again. And this time I can think for example, if 
I try psychological distress aid because in both the loading is less on psychological distress and is quite high on negative effect. So why not try deleting this one? Delete the eight one. Calculate PLS algorithm. Again, open the report. Go to discriminant validity. Yes, it is very near to 0.9, but it is uh, under 0.9, which means that now we can proceed with our measurement model. Still, if you feel that we, we need to delete one or more uh, factors, we can do that. For example, I would recommend we can delete uh, one of, for example, ashamed has a high loading. We can try deleting it and our problem will be solved. But since we have very limited indicators in negative effects, so I advise against it. Another way that is uh, suggested by uh, here at all uh, to decrease HTMT and that is increase uh, discriminant validity. Uh, there are two methods that you can do. Either you can increase the average mono trait hetero trait method correlation that is by eliminating items that have low correlation with other items of the same variable or we can split the constructs into homogeneous subconstructs. Another thing that you can do is to decrease the average hetero trait, hetero trait method correlation of the construct measures. That is mono trait is that within the uh, construct and the hetero trait is that uh, between the constructs. Right? So you can eliminate items that are strongly correlated with items in the opposing constructs and if possible we can reassign these indicators to the same uh, to other construct if that is theoretically plausible but i i don't think so this is an option because mainly we adopt or adapt uh, the questionnaires that are related to the constructs so we have this problem uh, with construct validity right we have already deleted one of the item from negative effect and uh, i want to see the other method that how i can see the correlation so to see the correlations you can go back to the data save this first go back to the data here we can see the correlations so here if i can see that we have uh, like uh, between psychological distress so let's see the correlation between the items of psychological distress so i'm going to scroll it and go to psychological distress let me zoom it so here we can see that we have psychological distress one okay it is uh, correlated with psychological distress to low correlation, uh, almost low correlations over here. For two, uh, the correlation seems pretty fine. For three, they are pretty fine. This one is low. So either eight has a low correlation with other items or one has a low correlation with other items of the same construct, right? So for rest of uh, the items, I can see that it's pretty normal, pretty average correlation. So what we can do is that we can go back and uh, go back to our model and let's see by deleting eight does things improve. So why I'm targeting psychological distress I'm going to tell you in a while because we should be very careful while deleting the indicators right. So we have uh, many indicators in psychological distress but we have limited indicator in negative effect and we've already deleted one to improve the AVE. So let's do it again. Start calculation. Go open the report. Go to discriminant validity. Oh, this is pretty pretty good now. So this is improved. Although uh, 0.85 is also one of the uh, red markers uh, because you will see green after it is less than 0.85, right? So some text also recommended 0.85, but it is recommended if the constructs are conceptually very overlapping like negative effect and psychological distress are conceptually very overlapping so as lower than 0.9 is acceptable but we can also try and delete number one right now we have five constructs to measure psychological distress again run the algorithm and open the report discriminant validity Again, it is lower. It is almost 0.85 now. So this is one of the methods that we can delete uh, or we can improve the discriminant validity. Let's also take a look at the correlation between the constructs uh, which have high uh, discriminant, which low discriminant validity, high HTMT. 
uh, that is uh, negative effect and psychological distress and see which of the items are uh, correlated with items of across the construct that we have seen in the cross loading as well but correlation also gives us this information for example as you can see the psychological distress number 6 is highly correlated with the items or indicators of negative effect like uh, quite high correlation here even three for even distress is actually highly correlated across this so so this information can also provide us uh, a guideline that which items to delete for instance i think we have already deleted psychological distress 6 C six is already deleted, so six was a problematic. Eight was problematic. One was problematic. So we can also uh, look at the cross correlation between the indicators. The reason I have chosen this particular data set is because, unlike other tutorials, I wanted to tell you if there are some issues with our data, and which always happens in our real life when we collect data. So how to go through it by an iterative process? see what fits best for our data what factors we can delete what factors we can retain because we cannot delete all of the indicators or we cannot delete uh, many indicators such that the content validity of our our construct changes so we have to retain as many as indicators uh, that it reflects the original thing that is meant to measure right so let's take a, a look at the summary of the reflective model measurement model Uh, what uh, steps we need to do, and this is basically called confirmatory composite analysis. Compo composite uh, confirmatory composite analysis is actually different from a uh, confirmatory factor analysis because here we are working with composites and we are assuming no correlation between the variables and linear combination of the variables based upon their reflective weights or their weights that are calculated by the PLS method. Uh, whereas in confirmatory factor analysis, we look at the variables. uh we correlate them and then we find the fit model uh, which model fits best for those factors right so here we are looking at the individual constructs and their uh, validities and reliabilities so this is all about the measurement reflective measurement model in the next video we will look at the structural model thank you